friends, this is a place where children belong, both children who are small and those of us who have the child at heart. See this box? What color is this box? Looks gold and yellow to me. It looks like your necklace. Huh? Like your necklace. Hmm. Gold is very valuable, isn't it, church? But parables are more valuable than gold. So I wonder if there's a parable inside of here. Hmm. This box also looks like a present. Do you know that parables are like presents? Parables were given to you even before you were born. They are yours. You don't need to take them. They are yours even before you know them. Do you see this weight on this box? Stops us from going in. Hmm. Sometimes, even when we're really ready, we can't always open the parable. They're just like that. I don't know why, but we won't get discouraged. If you can't find your way in, we'll keep coming back time and time again. And one day, the parable will open for us. I have an idea. Should we see what's in the box? Hmm. Maybe there's a parable inside it. I wonder what this could be. Hmm. What's this? What does this look like? It's, it's brown. Do you want to feel it? It's kind of heavy. I wonder what this could really be. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything in this box to help us get started. I don't think so. All we can do is begin. There once was a man who did such wonderful things and who told us such wonderful things about God and God's kingdom. And so people followed him because he was so wonderful. And they followed him and they heard him talking about a kingdom. But it wasn't just the kingdom that we read about in fairy tales. It was a little bit different. And it wasn't like a kingdom that they had ever visited. It wasn't even a kingdom that they had ever heard of. So they couldn't help it. They had to ask him again. They had to ask him what the kingdom of heaven was like. And so one day, when they asked him this, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a woman. The kingdom of heaven is like a woman. You can touch if you want to. Who took three measures of flour. Should we count these? One, two, She mixed them together. You ever mix something with your drink to stand with each other? She mixed them all together until she put the leaven in. So we have another little box. She put the leaven in the mixture and it swelled up so big. It multiplied. And it got big and puffy. It's like bread at the store. Now, I wonder if the woman has a name. Who does she look like? Stacy. Stacy. I think her name is Stacy. I wonder who she could really be. I wonder if the woman making the bread was happy. And I wonder. What could the bread really be? I wonder what the leaven is, really, 
in the parable and in life, the thing that makes it grow. I wonder, once the bread becomes big, do you think she's going to get small again? Yeah, how? I don't think she can put back the flour. I don't think you can eat flour again. Yeah, we can't eat it. Yeah, she has a good imagination. Hmm. I wonder if you have ever come close to a place where this happens. I mean, really, not just in the parable, but in life. Hmm. Would you like to help me put away this story so you can read this picture? Help me put away this story. You can always come back to it. You want to put the pieces in here with me? Thank you. Would you like to put that in here? Remember, you can always come back to this story, and each time there will be something new for you. I'm now going to invite Dana to come up and read our scripture as we all remain curious about this story. And I'll now be familiar words. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 33 and 34 from the New Revised Standard Version. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Jesus told crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fill what had been spoken through the prophet. If I open my mouth to speak in parables, I will proclaim what has been hidden since the foundation. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Church, what do you think about when you think of God's kingdom? Some might expect a Jesus to say a parable of God of the Most High, God sitting on a golden throne, people singing Hosanna in the highest. Some might have expected Jesus to say something fancy, glorious. But in Matthew, when Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, he talks about mustard seeds, hidden treasures, and making bread. This is the unexpected kingdom. I have a vivid memory of being in my grandmother's kitchen as a little girl, maybe four or five years old. We were making a peach pie, as we often did when I came over. She always let me help her a little bit more than you would maybe trust a four or five-year-old with all those messy ingredients. She let me carefully or not so carefully mix in the peaches and cinnamon. She trusted me to stretch the delicate pie crust over the pie when it was almost ready to go in the oven. And using her fingers, she would make the edge of the pie crust wavy. To her, it was simple, something she had done a hundred times before. But to me, taking these ingredients and making this pie was magic. The kingdom of heaven, as Talitha Arnold says, is as close to us as a loaf of bread or the crust of a pie or a warm tortilla. I love that no matter where you read this parable, the gospel writers give us no more than a few sentences. Jesus wasn't writing a dissertation or even a 20-minute sermon. He simply says, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Hmm. How extraordinarily ordinary. 
When I introduce this godly play lesson, you might have heard me say, parables are like presents given to you before you were born. They're yours. You don't need to take them. They're already yours, even if you do not know what they are. We then notice the lid as we looked at the box. We say, this box has a lid on it. You see, even if we are really ready, it is hard to go inside of a parable. They are just like that. I don't know why. Don't be discouraged if you can't find your way in just yet. Keep coming back. One day, the parable will open for you. Keep coming back. It will be different each time. The godly play method gets to the heart of what I think this parable is trying to teach us this morning. The mystery of God is all around us. Yes, the mystery of God is all around us. Can you see it? And now we get to slow down. Take a deep breath and listen. Be still and notice. Keep coming back. What speaks to me most about this godly play parable is that it tells us that we are not expected to fully understand. This parable flips our assumptions by inviting us to sit still and listen, because maybe understanding fully isn't exactly the point. And in today's world, when we need to know all of the answers to achieve as much as we can while making it look effortless, Jesus welcomes us into something different. Jesus welcomes us into a reality where preschoolers to seminary professors can listen and wonder. I wonder what this could really be. We look to Jesus for neatly wrapped answers, but instead he invites us to be curious. Where is God's kingdom in your life? To play with his riddles that are full of possibilities, puzzles that in such few words quietly subvert our expectations about what God's kingdom is really like. And even when we feel like we understand, we are called to keep knocking on the parable boxes, keep returning time and time again to hear these holy whispers. The kingdom of God is like the most common things in human life. Can you see it? Can you search for it? Can you find it with me? The kingdom of God is like my grandmother's pie, ingredients multiplied into something beautiful. It's like the first sip of coffee that multiplies my energy on a Sunday morning. It's like the old letters I keep from my family. I wonder what it's like for you. And just to add another layer to our curiosities, <laughs> Talitha Arnold reminds us that there's, there is something even more strange to the ancient listeners of this puzzle. Jesus tells us a story in a tradition where yeast is a symbol of corruption and impurity. And so oddly in this parable, yeast becomes an agent of miraculous growth of God's kingdom, God the multiplier. So church, if God can use mustard seeds and corrupt leaven to grow the kingdom, I wonder what God can do with you. I wonder what the kingdom of God is like to you. I wonder what this story is really all about. I wonder what ordinary things in your life has the possibility to teach you about God's movement, God's movement here and now. And as you saw for yourself this morning, godly play listeners, trust the process. Trust the mystery of parables, the mystery of God's voice. Trust the liturgical calendar. Trust that wherever the spirit is leading us, that it will be good and we will find God there. Keep coming back. One day the parable will open for you. Keep coming back. Maybe it'll be different this time. 
We use godly play not just to teach, but to form both children and adults, asking them to be curious and hopeful as we enter into each story. Even when we participate in stories you think you know by heart, because maybe this is the first time you've really heard it and what you might discover might be unexpected. Just as the woman trusts the leavened bread and like Jesus's puzzles, I can't neatly wrap this puzzle for you into a concise sentence, but instead I share godly plays and Christ's invitation to you this morning. May the mystery of God be ever present in your life. What is God multiplying in you? And may Jesus' wisdom not end here. No. Go find new parables. What in your world produces the abundance of a mustard seed? What is like leaven, disdained as corrupt, but is actually an agent of God's transforming power? What parables about God's kingdom do you have? What ordinary things do you see in your life that when you take the time to slow down and notice, these ordinary things mirror God's here and now kingdom? Church, where does God show up in your life unexpectedly? And can you share that with others? So will you keep knocking on this parable, this golden box? Will you keep coming back to this ancient wisdom with me? Maybe, just maybe, you'll find something new. The kingdom of God is like bread making. The kingdom of God is as close as the breath you take, as the sandwich bread you'll pull out of the fridge this afternoon, and other ordinary things. The kingdom of God is here and now. Can you search for it? Can you hope for it? Amen. And now let us sing our hymn of response, Here I Am.